Hey, there you are. I was waiting for you. I'm John Zadar. This is May 18th. It is Wednesday and you're watching On Top and Hot, where I like to share my DD on OTC and penny stocks that I see as I'm trading through the day. Now, I found a few stocks today that were interesting, but the day in itself was interesting. It was a bear market, folks. Yogi would have loved it. Wow. So, finding Decent running stocks today was hard, but we're going to look not just at a few key stocks that were moving today with good reason, but we're going to also look at other stocks that were running and whatever reasons they had. Come on, I'll show you what I got. If you're a regular watcher, you know exactly where we are right now. We are at the otcmarkets.com website. This is my favorite site to do due diligence on an OTC stock simply because it's never outdated. FINRA and the SEC update this site every single day. So why waste your time searching around the internet? Just come here. It's really easy. So how did the OTC market finish today? Exactly like yesterday. I mean exactly. $2.1 billion, it's what we do virtually every day, no matter how many shares we move. Today, we moved 6.7 billion shares, just like yesterday, exactly. But a year ago today, we were doing about 40 billion shares. Big difference. And our trades are still dropping. Last week, we were at 350,000. Yesterday, 290. Today, 281. It's not a good trend. So we're going to be looking at runners and I like this site for that because they give me information that I can't find anywhere else. Trades. I come here, this current market, I click that. This will give me the most active stocks on the entire market. It looks at all of them. So right there is all the information and you choose what you want to look at and then drill down. And of course, we want to look at advancers. Now, I'm not interested in stocks just over a dollar or stocks just over a nickel. I want all of them. So click that all, then click that more, and you get this page. A big, long list of the gainers on the OTC market with the biggest gainer at the very top. And every stock is here. Nothing is missed. You've got the ticker name, the price of the stock, percentage gain, which is what order it's in, biggest at the top how much money they generated selling their shares today. I don't know who needs that information. How many shares they sold, volume, that's what everybody wants. And then what I like, trades. Trades is a number I can't find anywhere else. This tells me how many trades the stock has had through the day. I come here at 10 in the morning, whatever number there is, what's been done up to 10 in the morning. So we are looking at the end of the day right now. Now I like to find big numbers. Big numbers tells me there's a lot of people around that stock. Now, 33, 26, those aren't big numbers. Maybe at 10 in the morning. Oh, at 10 in the morning, those would be good numbers. And I'd come over here and I'd click that, see if there's any news or disclosure, find a catalyst. Maybe it's the one to get into. But at the end of the day, pfft, you want to sit around all day watching a stock that only has 33 trades on it? I don't think so. So we are looking for a big number like that. 1,307 trades. Now, how many people do you think it took to make that many trades? More than 10? Uh, yeah. <laughs> More than 100? Probably. My point is there's probably hundreds of people. There could be 1,307. You don't know, but I guarantee you it's more than five. So there is a crowd of people around this stock. They have moved 26 million shares 227% gains. That is PAC V. Now, yesterday we did the same thing. We looked at this and we found stocks we were going to look at and we looked at other stocks that were running, but we didn't actually go in and look at the stock. We just wanted to know the reason they were running. And this was one of them I just glanced over. They had soft catalyst news yesterday. Nothing I thought was that big but they did 75% gains yesterday on the soft catalyst news. Today, there's no new news, no new disclosures. It's still the same news and they're up another 227%. That's like 300% in two days. So I am going to look at this stock with you. The next big number we got coming down is 560. Pretty big. You got 168% gains. This is GTCH. Now, GTCH came out with a filing. It is called the NT10K. Now, a 10K, a 10Q, those are your financials for your quarterly and your annual. A NT10K or 10Q is a excuse form. 
NT, not. They're not going to get their filings out on time. And that's what they filed, an excuse. They said they're not going to make it. However, in the filing, you're allowed a five-day grace period after the day. And I think uh, the 16th is the last day. The 15th is the cutoff. The 16th starts it. And they say they're going to have their filings out within that five-day grace period. So, on that news, they jumped 168%. Scrolling down for the next big number, 219, 72 million shares, 100% gains. And this is Pink Limited. Now, I was under the impression anything pink was tradable because these black diamonds are not tradable. These are on the expert market. These are stocks normally late on filing and they get yanked off the open market until they get caught back up and you can't trade the stock while it's over there. So we don't even consider those stocks, but this one, and I'll show you what's going on. This one is pink limited, but it's caveat emptar. Ca skull and crossbones, if you will. Caveat emptor, we'll read what it says. Buyer beware. That's what caveat emptor means. OTC Markets Group has determined that there is a public interest concern associated with this company. And that's all the information they give you. They won't tell you what is wrong, what is going on. All you see is that skull and crossbones. And now, even though it's pink limited information even, because we can trade pink limited information, not caveat emptor. At least not my broker. I'm on TD Ameritrade. They will not sell it to me. I don't know of a lot of brokers who will. So even though this had 219 trades and you're thinking, but how did it have 219 trades if it's not tradable? Well, on the open market, people behind the open market, brokers, marketers, they can trade it and they do. Obviously, they had this thing moving. Scrolling down for another big number, 190. 63% gains, did move a few million shares. This is OWUV, One World Universe. There is no news. There is no disclosures. So what we have are a couple of tweets that came out from Karen Courier. Karen Courier is a woman who basically saved this company from the expert markets. It was dark and defunct. She cleaned it up, got it pink, got it on the market, got it a deal, a reverse merger. They're now working with the metaverse and NFTs and stuff like that. And they were really on fire. And then they started falling and falling and falling. I mean, I swear there was 20 days of falling there. Well, the other day she tweeted a few tweets and I think she was a little upset. She says that she has gathered all the information for the people who have been telling lies about the company and she has passed this information over to the authorities. Furthermore, she wanted to thank them for dumping the stock because it gave her a much better price to buy more. That's it. Those are the tweets. Unless you can find more out there, that was all I could find. And it went up 63% because of that aggravated tweet. Scrolling down again, we have 197 with 10 million shares, 56% gains. CMGR, they did have news today. I think it's a soft catalyst, but the stock is moving and it's legitimate. So we're going to take a look at that stock as well. Here we've got Magic Wheel, MJWL, 54% gains, did 11 million shares. You can't trade it. What do you mean you don't believe me? All right, let's come on into that one. Look, Skull and Crossbones, Caveat Emptar. It wasn't like that a little while ago, so I don't know what's happened to this company. But the fact of the matter is, it's being traded heavily behind the scenes, which tells you something. Shame we can't be a part of that. Even if you hold the stock, they'll allow you to sell your stock, but you're not allowed to buy. All right, let's keep coming down just a little bit further. We're down to about 40% now. Uh, 93 share uh, trades, not a big, big number, but looking at it, I went to see if there was any catalyst. I couldn't find anything. Not news, not a disclosure, not even a tweet, nothing. And still it ran 38%. So there's no reason to show that to you, right? And that's about it, folks. So, and the third stock, I think, fell. It was a lot higher on the charts, but there is another stock we're going to take a look at that just isn't here right now. But, and what are we down to here? 27. So, it's under 27%, but we're going to look at it anyways because I think it's got something to offer us. So, let's go take a look at that very first stock. What was it? Uh, Pack V, the one that's run almost 300% in two days. 
So who exactly is PacV? It's Pacific Ventures Group. They finished today just over seven cents, 0 0.072, with a whopping 227% gains. They are on the pink tier, they're current. They've got a transfer agent verified, but they do not have a verified profile. We do want to see that come up here. It is important to see both of these ticks, but it won't stop the company from being sold. So what does the company do? Well, they've got a description here, but there's a better one if you go to the news. Pacific Ventures Group is a consumer-centric distribution company focused on food, beverage, and alcohol-related products. Through its portfolio of operating subsidiaries, Pacific Ventures delivers specialty groceries, top quality proteins and produce, and innovative products to consumers through wholesale, retail, and direct consumer channels. Now, as I said, the company does not have any news today. There's no filings out today. There was a soft catalyst news yesterday, which we're going to take a look at. And to my surprise, I discovered that they too filed an NT 10K on the 16th. And I'm going to share some information about that with you because it's very interesting. So even though they didn't have anything new today, what was the relative volume around this company? Kick in 1.7 million is their average for the last 30 days. And that was probably even lower yesterday. Today, she did 26 million. I don't know what percentage increase that is, but it's a big increase. What is the share structure on the company? Not bad. We got 53 million outstanding and a good low float of 22 million. That's super duper low, but that is a nice float. That's probably helping it move easy here. What are her financials? Well, she's doing pretty good. We've got three zeros here they tell us to put behind here. So that's about $42 million at the end of 2021. Not bad. It cost them about $37 million to make that money. So they got to keep just under $5 million. And over the last four years, they have been increasing in their revenues. Taking a look at their disclosures, there is that NT10Q. Not. They're not going to be filing on time. Now, when you jump in here, they tell you the rules of this form. And they tell you that you have up until on or no later than the 15th calendar day of the prescribed due date, which is normally the 15th. Then they go on to tell you that if you're late, you have an additional five calendar days following the prescribed date. And most people will tell you they can't do it in whatever words they use. This one's not very well written. And then they will add, however, we believe we're going to get our filings in before the five days is over. So they're late on the 15th, file their late filing on the 16th. The stock surges, they fi file their filing before the five days and everything's okay. But what if they had filed on time yesterday? Would the stock have surged like it did today, learning they were going to be late by five days? I really don't get it. But this is the thing. I have seen approximately 10 or 12 in the last two or three days and not noticed it before. Every company I saw that filed an NT 10K or 10Q on the 16th of the month. Yeah, the same exact day they all ran. Near 100 or over 100%. Just saying we're going to be late but we'll have it in within the next five days. Whew. I think I'm going to watch that next time. All right. So what have we got for news? That is really what we are over here for because that's all they had is the NT10K and this piece of news right here. So let's take a peek at that. It's the same piece of news we got their description from. This came out on the 17th yesterday. Pacific Ventures Group a consumer-centric holding company specializing in the distribution of food, beverage, alcohol-related products, today pre-announced preliminary unaudited record revenue of $10.4 million for the three months ended March 31st, 2022. Notably, the quarter's record sales were up 43% over the prior year's quarter, primarily due to strong demand from our growing customer base. Now, did you catch all those words, right? Pre-announced. I don't know how many companies that actually tell you what their earnings are going to be before they come out. Preliminary. So these are early numbers, unaudited. They don't even have a CPA looking at them. <laughs> Sounds like they're just giving us some numbers. And it's 43% increase. I guess if they were going to pull a number out of their hat, <laughs> they could have picked a bigger number. But 
They picked 10.4, 43% gains, and this thing took off. And folks, I can't find anything else. If there's something else out there, put it in the comments below. So let's go take a look at this chart and see the 75% gain yesterday and the 227% gains after 75% yesterday. And of course, we're over here at Thinkorswim doing our charting. This is a free trading platform you can get from TD Ameritrade just for signing up for a free trading account. You don't actually have to use them as your primary account. Just keep the account open and you can use this just like I am. So the six month, four hour chart for Pack V, we got a 48 cent high bubble back here and a low of just over a penny. That is over 4,800% between the two, folks. She has been severely under the 200 the entire time and severely crushed it here these last couple of days. The technicals look pretty good. The MACD here has just made a serious change. It has been under the signal line for months and months. And today, with vengeance, it busted through it and is on a very strong incline right now. RSI is on fire and the CCI is far above the green. Really, really looking good. However, they all look to have just a wee bit of pullback right now. Let's come on down to that 20 day, one hour view. Very planted, nothing really going on. Had a pop here and a low bubble, which she paid no mind to. There's the 16th. This is the day the filing came out, nothing. Then we had the news come out about their preliminary unaudited revenues. She got a good jump out of that, 75%, hit the 200, which has just now come into the game, and today, without anything new, took off. Is that because there's a 200 there? I don't know. Technicals are all pulling back right now because of the pullback. Let's see that better on the five day, five minute. So there's your climb yesterday. She got above the 200, floated on it, and just started to pull away nice and easy. The bell opened up this morning, and she caught some momentum and took off. So she had a high here of 11 cents and started at about uh, two and a half cents. So you've got about 400% gains at her ultimate high. At her ultimate high. She ended up way back here. But come on, folks. You know what I like to do? No, not that. <laughs> I like to draw a line from the bottom of the surge and I'm only going to look at today's surge right there and I cut it in the middle and if she keeps at least half of her surge, I'm happy. Well, she's far above that halfway mark, way up here. She has fallen. She's come through all of her SMAs, which is scary. She has broken through the 50, which is a very strong SMA. She's still above the 50% mark on our surge. Now she's hanging here in the air. I'm going to back up to the hour just to see if there's anything there she's sitting on. No, no, not really. The 10 is way down here. So she is just hanging there in the air right now. I don't believe anything further is going to show anything there. No, no, those lines don't get there. I don't believe so. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It looks like she's sitting right on that 10, don't it? Right on that 10. And this is on the four hour 10. So she is sitting on something. You cannot see anything there. She's not sitting on anything there and she's not sitting on anything on the five minute, which looks scary. looks like she's just gonna continue falling, but we do see she has some support there on the four hour. Everything looks depressed though. She's just come down below the signal line. RSI is falling hard. CCI looks like it's about ready to dump. So, <laughs> I didn't expect it to run 75% on the news, let alone another 220%. So to go almost 300%, yeah, I expect this to fall. Fall to where? Man, I have no clue. Their filings are going to come out. What do you think when the filings are going to come out is going to happen? Is it going to jump? I mean, isn't it built in now? So I'm not quite sure how this is going to play off, but I wanted you to see how preliminary announcements can have a strong effect. How the NT 10K 10Q, even though it says they're late and we're going to file in just five more days, can have a stock running. Over and over again, I have seen this. I don't understand it, but we're going to learn, aren't we? Let's go take a look at that second stock now. The second stock we found on that list was CMGR Clubhouse Media Group. Finished today just under a penny and a half at 0.0141 with a whopping 56% gains. 
on the pink tier current with a transfer agent and again no verified profile we want to see it they tell us here we believe clubhouse media group which has no relation to clubhouse app represents the future of influencer media and marketing with a global network of professionally run content houses each of which has its own brand influencer cohort and production capabilities now as far as i can tell this is an influencer group they hire celebrities to promote products and companies of all sorts all over the world so they're doing pretty good and they're growing at a nice clip so they had news today and they had news yesterday which i really wasn't aware of so what was the relative volume today not bad we've done 500 percent increase in volume from 2 million to 10 million share structure okay they don't tell us what the float is there's nothing listed here so i'm gonna go look that up it should be up there for you they say it's 6.9 million but that was a couple years ago that's why i don't like to use the float that they give me here so whatever it is that's it hopefully i remembered to put it there for you what are their financials well they are making money the last two years they went from one mil well they went from nothing to one million to 4.2 million but they had to spend a lot for that and they got to keep about three quarter million of that money disclosures well there there we've got a new financial that just hasn't been added on because that only went up to december it didn't show anything current now i did take a peek at this they had like uh eight hundred and sixteen thousand dollars in assets they also did just about that in revenues but they were running at a loss i didn't get into all the details where the loss came from but they're okay for considering what's going on right now all right and that news which is really what this is all about the second piece of news did come out yesterday clubhouse media group has finalized a brand promotional deal with a well-known social media star heidi her last name through their partnership with the raymond agency isn't that the same agency heidi is the mother of dixie the famous charlie who has the most followed TikTok account in the world. The account boasts 140 million followers. In addition, Charlie has 48 million on Instagram and 9.5 million on YouTube. Heidi is also a large social media following with 9.8 million followers on TikTok and 2.4 million on Instagram. So the whole family has got followers, don't they? So those are the two people that they've brought in. I really am not too familiar with this lady, though I've seen her picture before. The other one, oh yeah, I know her. So let's go take a look at that chart and see what it's looking like and see if it's going to continue to grow. CMGR, six-month, four-hour chart. We got a high bubble back here of $2.30 six months ago and a low bubble here of double zero nine roughly wow what a fall that is i can't even calculate that in my head she has been far far under the 200 and is getting real close now at least it looks close at this vantage point we see the volume is picking up here it is even getting stronger in this last month technicals are pretty strong except the macd is nothing let's come on in on that 20 day one hour view see if it looks any better so she was running downhill hard hit that low bubble, bounced off the low bubble, um, well, about 100% actually. Yeah, that's actually about 100% was underneath the 10. The worst position you can be, the bar is under the 10, and she went up over all the SMAs on top of the 50. Was up there for a few days, lost hold again, sitting on the 200 hall, and then today she took off. But there's no news today, right? No news today. Technicals, we are strong in the MACD, on fire with the RSI. And even though we're in a strong position on the CCI, it is falling right now. Five day, five minute. So we've got our 200 in there. Strong volume today. And there was no activity. Look at this, folks. We had news yesterday and the news the day before about the two people they hired and absolutely nothing if anything it fell over those two days but today it not only wanted to get on top of the 50 but shoot across the 200 and fly like an eagle way up here what was that from her low today she went from just under a penny to a penny and a half 
So you've got roughly 50%, 55%, 60%, something like that there. Well, they finished today at 56% right there. So that's a little bit higher. Obviously, kept more than 50% of her gains. Technicals, we got a crossover that looks like it's about ready to come. The RSI is climbing. It's under the 60, but it's pointed towards there. And the CCI is in the perfect position of growth over the neutral, approaching the green with the arrow pointed up. So I don't know if this is going to run anymore considering it didn't run on the news days and it ran today. Now, by golly, it's possible I missed something out there. If you find something, put it down below. I like to know this stuff, but I couldn't find anything else. So I would not presume this was going to continue running. But there's your delayed reaction unless somebody knows something I don't. All right, let's take a look at that last stock. Now, the last stock we're looking at was not on that current market list, at least not when we looked at it. It was this morning. This had some strong runs and gains this morning, but she did pull back. This is GGSM Gold and Gemstone Mining. No, they're not a mining company. They finished the day at 0 .002 with 25% gains. They're on the pink tier as well, current, and they've got both the verified profile and a transfer agent, so they look good. Now, they do have a description here. Like I said, they're not a mining company. They say that they're managing properties and assets and charter boats, and they're trying to create a sports business. Well, <laughs> that's a little confusing. So I went and looked at a news press to get an idea of what they do. Now, there's no way I'm going to read this because they mention a bunch of island names over near Indonesia that I cannot pronounce. But Suffice it to say, GGSM is a publicly traded company engaged in the charter boat business in these islands and beyond. They have surf charter and different types of boating businesses that they do. And the news that came out today was about boating, but not charting boats like this. It was about much bigger boats hauling construction materials. And we'll get to that here in just a second. So they did have news today. What was the relative volume around that news? Booming! About 5 million jumped to 80 million. That is a huge jump, folks. Her share structure, what do we got here? Oh, God. Huge amount of shares, folks. We got 1.2 billion shares, roughly. That is a ton. Financials, they making any money? They are making money and growing quick. They were real low a few years ago at 347,000 in 2021. And right now, annually, they're at $7.2 million. That's interesting. An annual report for 2022. They got anything quarterly here? Uh, 4.4 million in the last quarter for this year. So yeah, they're making money and they're starting to make it really fast. They got any new disclosures over here we can take advantage of? Uh, no, 2016. And of course, they're current with their financials. So the only thing we got is the news. Now, they don't have a lot of news here. And I want you to notice that because when you look at the charts, you do see some big spikes on certain days, right? There's no news here. We got two pieces of news. Both came from this month, one on the 12th, one on the 18th. Gold and Gemstone Mining announces positive revenues in 2022. And then the one that came out today, Gold Gemstone Mining set sail, isn't that cute? With new government contracts and building construction of two new resorts in the Matawi Islands. So the news did come out today. Real briefly, Gold and Gemstone Mining is pleased to announce new government contracts and increased operations from its cargo boat, Marini. Cargo Boat Marini is located in Sumatra in the Pandang Harbor and has the capacity to haul over 200 tons of construction building materials for resorts and government contracts between these islands. Cargo Boat Transporters is a growing business because building and land development are expected to grow. Indonesia's construction sector is growing at 7 to 8% per year. And that's the news. They've gotten some government contracts because they're expanding out there. And you can't get it from the mainland of the islands by plane. You got to do it by boat. So they're getting all the business. And what was their run today? It was only 25% to finish, but they were up higher at the start of the day. Let's go take a look at that. Not really an impressive chart for GGSM. Of course, this is a six-month, four-hour chart. 
We got a low bubble way back here of triple zero five, and the high is near us at double zero four six, almost a thousand percent difference. She's been all over this 200, back and forth, and just keeps coming back to it, just like she did today with that huge jump. The MACD is just coming up to the center line. It is pushing up. RSI is pulling back, getting weaker, as is the CCI. Let's take a look at that 20-day one hour. Way below the 200 20 days ago, was on the 50, fell from the 50, hit that low bubble, which encouraged the price to jump back on top of the 50, held it for a few days, dropped it the last couple of days, and today with the news, not only got on top of the 50, but on top of the 200, climbed to a good high here. What do we got? This went from 006 up to 0025, about 30% gains. Technicals are all starting to fall right now. Volume is strong for the day. Let's look at that five day, five minute. So she was on the 50, not showing a whole lot of strength, bounced off of that low bubble without a whole lot of potency, and then today took off. She got that 33% gains in uh, 10 minutes. That, that was at 10 minutes after the bell rang. She did hit that high again at about 1230 if you hung around. After that, she fell away and she came down here towards the 50-day SMA. Now, it seems to me she's close. I'm going to draw my lines here for that surge, looking for that 50% drop. I'm going to eyeball it, but you can use math to find it. Somewhere about there, I'm at about 0021 and the price is at 002. So she is right below, which as far as I'm concerned is as close to it as you can get. She's right underneath it, hanging on to it like a monkey. So she is near the 50, on top, underneath, as long as you're right there. She's holding 50% of her gains, which is the only good thing I can see right now. Hanging on the 50 with technicals all falling. MACD going under the center line, pushing down, RSI falling, and the CCI is in the trash. Really looks bad. This looks like it's going to come down. I would say it was going to come down, and it could come all the way down to here. I really don't know. But these are what are running. So these are what I got to show you, folks. And we've got to pay attention to why they're running. Because if this one runs like this for this reason, another stock may run like this for the same reason. So it was a very, very bearish day across all the markets. Nobody got away today. And the OTC was the same. There wasn't a lot running, as you saw. And the ones that were running didn't even have big reasons. But I got to tell you what impresses me most are those NT 10Ks and NT 10Qs. They come out seemingly on the 16th of the month, the 16th. And when they do, the stock bursts. The stock just bursts. Yeah, we're going to be late, but we're going to have our filings in within the next five days. No problem. So I would keep my eye on those. Otherwise, folks, you got to dig around. You got to see the news. You got to see what's going on. And even good news may not produce on the charts. So really, your charts are telling you the story. They're the technicals. Where's the price sitting up against the strong SMAs? Is there a low bubble? Stuff like that. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.